Welcome Mosaic Enthusiast. I'm Bonnie Fitzgerald and today I want to give you some tips on making mosaics using broken dishes, crockery, smash tiles, and some fun knickknacks. Learn about adhesives, appropriate substrates, grouting, and of course how to break the plates into usable mosaic material. Here are just a small sampling of artworks and projects, some abstract, some figurative. Many of these are student works from recent workshops and for many, their first mosaics. Using old plates, knickknacks, and crockery is a terrific way to recycle and a fun way to incorporate a family heirloom. This orb is made using my mother-in-law's dishes. This portrait of my mother incorporates pieces of plates I gave her as an anniversary gift eons ago. The French term Picassiette translates to stolen from plate, and a Frenchman named Raymond Isidore is credited as the father of the art form. In 1938, as a gift to his wife, Isidore began covering every surface of his home, inside and out, with mosaic designs. Maison Picassiette in Chartres, France is opened to the public. A similar tradition called Trinatus, literally chopped, is a folk art tradition revived in the early 20th century by Antonio Gaudi. He is best known for his work in Barcelona. When collecting, I look for interesting colors and patterns. Thrift shops, yard sales, and possibly even your own attic are treasure troves. Let's begin with some cutting and nipping tips. I prefer to nip plates Nipping into a towel will help confine the broken pieces. Different plates are going to cut and break differently, and you'll just need to experiment with hand tools to figure out which works best for you. I find plates easiest to process into mosaic material, although bowls, cups, and handles can be fun. Obviously, thinner, more delicate porcelain plates will cut easier than a thick ceramic platter. Countless factors dictate how easy or difficult it's going to be to break the plate down to usable pieces. You just have to experiment. These nippers are manufactured for the tile trade and are relatively inexpensive. The jaw has to be close enough to nip the plate. I recommend placing the jaw on the edge of the plate. Once you have that first crack, the rest will follow in short order. Some folks like using a hammer. I'm not a huge advocate of this technique because I cannot control the break like I can with a nipper. I get a lot of undercuts and wonky shapes. But if a hammer is your thing, give it a try. The rim can be problematic and you just have to figure a way out to either cut it away or work with it. There are lots of artists who use the rims in interesting ways. I made this piece in a workshop with Kelly Knickerbocker and used that pesky rim in a very successful way. Edges of the plate can also prove helpful. For my mom's glasses, I used the rim of these plates on their edge. If you're wondering how to get very specific cuts, like the center platter in this table, a ring saw was used. A ring saw may be a good investment if you like precise and controlled cuts. For this table, I wanted to incorporate the large platter in the center with more of a detailed lay pattern surrounding it. I noodled through the entire design on a piece of paper, a template that was cut exactly to the size of the table. Only after I was happy with all the fitting of the pieces did I glue to the substrate. I recommend using thin set mortar as your adhesive. For interior works, Pre-mix thin set is easy and readily available, or you can certainly mix your own from powder. You need an adhesive that will grab onto your mosaic pieces completely. Some folks use silicone or similar products, and they are okay if they work with your substrate. For me, I stick with thin set because I know it works well with the ceramic dishes and our substrate. There are several videos on the channel about thin set mortar and details are given in the description. Photo frames are a popular project in this technique. 
I have found the best frames have large flat areas. You can repurpose an old frame or buy a new one. Regardless, you will want to take time to properly prepare the surface by giving it some tooth. Score the area to mosaic with a box cutter. This will give the adhesive something to grab onto. Applying a scratch coat of your thin set is another added security measure. I recommend the same process if using medium density fiberboard or any wood product. This mosaic was adhered to a hardy backer board substrate that was cut into this shape with a jigsaw. This product is inexpensive and available at home supply stores. I prefer products like Weddy Board or some other lightweight backer board. These products have a polystyrene center with a cementitious and fiberglass skin and they easily cut with a jigsaw. And finally, to grout or not to grout. On the channel we have an excellent video about grouting these kinds of mosaics. Upcycle, repurpose, and have fun. The possibilities are limitless. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, life's a mosaic. You pick the pieces.